Good morning. Welcome back. And um, this will be our final session today. So I'm going to start with the meditation and um, can enjoy. So sit comfortably, with your back straight, and relax the body. Take a deep breath, and breathe in love. Breathe in love and breathe out fear. Breathe in peace and breathe out stress. Accept everything as it is. I withdraw from my body and my surroundings and focus the awareness on the self. Being with light. Being that is from the world of light, the home of souls, the invisible world that cannot be seen with the physical eyes, but understood with the mind. This world of light is a world of total silence. All souls are in their original state of being. Very peaceful and pure. There is no time no stories, no roles to play. The feeling is of eternity, like floating in a sea of peace, unending pure light. golden red light. This home is also the home of the Supreme, the Supreme of all souls. It is a family of souls in a world of peace, united by the love the Supreme. This is the true world. Where we come from and go back to. Gently return to the physical world. And again, good morning. 
to a new day on the journey. And so, welcome back again. So where we left off, I'm just going to do another little revision. Um, we, again, reminding the self is that being of light in the home of light. It is the player in the drama. It is observing and is also the traveler. And along the way, as we use energy, we lose a little energy as we go along and we get trapped into the matter. We identify with the things in the world. We identify with our homes. We identify with our car. If I get a little scratch on it, I feel like I got scratched. We identify with our friends. We identify with our bodies. Oh, good do I look today. <laughs> what is my role that I play? So all these things we get trapped into and when we trapped into them, we lose touch with our sovereignty. We give away ourself to the external world. We are looking outside. And so when we get trapped, we start feeling insecure. And all we really want is to feel secure but because we know these things are temporary and one day won't be there, there's always a little bit of fear that might get taken away. So we want to feel secure and all these desires come. And it all begins with body consciousness, which is identifying ourselves with the body and the roles that we play. And we call that ego. So I, we always say I and mine, but who is the I and what is the mind? I am the soul and what belongs to me is my original qualities of peace, love, joy, and strength. So this is the true self. And when we lose that, we feel insecure because we're trying to get it met outside. And again, those things are temporarily temporary. So it's never enough. The desires just keep coming. We want more, we want more, we want more. And when we're not sure, then again, there's worry and stress and fear. When we're unfulfilled, we get angry. If we want something, we can't get it, we get angry. Or sometimes there's jealousy because somebody else has and I don't. And when we blame the self, then there's low self-esteem, frustration, sadness, and guilt. And what do all these qualities have in common? They drain our energy. They're pulling on us and taking us into a place that isn't true and draining our energy so that we get caught even more into the negative. So, the story, everything starts new and gets old. So the soul also eventually loses touch with its truth. So what we have to do is return to our true identity. And so to experiment, so this is just knowledge until I really can experience it. But the true identity, we are full, we're complete. We are love, we are peace. We are powerful and nobody can take that away. We can't own anything except ourselves. That we have eternally. 
It never goes away. So might as well become friends with ourselves. So we can't own anything, but the good thing is we can't lose anything. We have everything we need. We are eternal. We don't die. So one of our biggest fears is death. And we're immortal. And when we are in our truth, there's innately peacefulness, loveful, joyful, mercy. We care about people. We love to give. We want to give. So that's the story of ourself and the dramas as we come down into the drama. We forget over time, and this is our home, where all souls come from, all of us in that pure truth. We're the same eternal parent. So who is that parent? Who is the one we call supreme? Who is the one we turn to in times of trouble? universally. Is there a being? We have a memory. So even we don't believe, but in times of trouble, it's very interesting. We call out. I was once on a sailboat and when we lost the mass in a storm, even though I was negating the supreme being, I was talking to that being. Now I don't negate that being at all. <laughs> it's a very beautiful being. But here we are in our eternal home, the family of souls. And you see this drama here is very small. It's like little box. So from the eternal home, it's as though this is the important, and this is just a little temporary drama. So because we've got trapped so much into the negative, we need more and more to return to what is true. And so the supreme is like a mirror for us to see our truth, a being that is totally benevolent eternally. a being that is never influenced by the drama, that is beyond the drama, a being that is constant, unchanging, eternally pure, eternally true, a being who understands everything and a being that is ever benevolent, only gives happiness and love. A being that never gives sorrow. A being that eternally never even has a single thought that isn't for benefit. A being who is our eternal parent, who has no gender, but all the qualities of the perfect mother, unconditional, purest love, that is always there. when things get challenging, is always there, shining that love. The eternal father, who is strong, unchanging, unaffected, and enables us to be strong, enables us to return 
to that place of truth inside, which is powerful, to stand on our feet, to be courageous, your father and also can be our friend the one who is always listening who cares that we can talk to the one who has been remembered as love but sometimes we forget and also say that calamities are acts of that one. But in fact, that soul is only here to give, is a soul that doesn't need anything, but is the benefactor for all. A soul that we can easily connect with, but first we have to remember who we are we too are souls. We too are like that one in our truth. But we forget. That one never forgets. That one understands the big picture and wants us to get back to our truth. So let's have another meditation. So again, I just relax. Visualize myself as a little tiny star of light point of light behind the eyes. being of peace, being of light, being of love. Who is from the world of light? The world of silence. In this world, the soul is in its perfect state. Completely pure. And God-like. This is also the home where the Supreme resides. the most beautiful one that is eternally pure, that is radiant, like the spiritual sun. The special light who is the ocean, the ocean of peace, unlimited peace, unlimited benevolence. Unlimited generosity. And the ocean of love. Showering that love, that unconditional love that needs nothing, 
just give the innocent Lord the comfort of hearts I just feel the rays of that spiritual sun like a flower I open myself to receive that love and filling with that pure love is healing, nurturing the soul. All of the things of the past disappear as I am lost in that love. That love is shining in the soul. Feel strength from the eternal Father of the one who is constant, unchanging, absolute peace. And strength. The Almighty that understands everything and is unaffected. I feel with that strength. Absorbing the peace from the ocean of peace. I become peaceful again. There is the memory. And awakening that memory. Feeling full, I return back to the physical body. Take a deep breath. So, welcome back again. Sometimes it's nice to just stay there. <laughs> anyway, so this is something we can practice in meditation. And um, throughout the day, return to that awareness. And then bring that truth back into the soul as we carry on during the day. So in this practice, there can be many beautiful experiences, but sometimes there's things that come along that challenge us a little bit, that make it difficult to meditate, or challenges us in our drama during the day. And so I'm going to draw another picture.
this one's too big, but it's bigger now, but it normally it should be, this should be bigger. So we're moving in from this into this, and this will become bigger. Um, so here we have, that is temporary. identity. And this is true identity. This temporary identity makes us unhappy. This pure identity, which is our true makes us very happy. I kind of want to go off the face. Anyway, we're sparkling. Um, kind of race this. <laughs> um, so this consciousness, in this consciousness, we have attachment. We have greed, we have arrogance, and anger, and then there's desire. In this consciousness, we have peace. love, joy, purity, and strength, or power. I don't say power because it's a very gentle power. It's a kind of power that you're able to give love to those who defame you. So, but that takes a lot of strength. So body consciousness basically drains our energy and drains everything we have so we feel empty. And we have the need to take. Soul consciousness we feel full, we feel light, we feel happy, and there is a feeling of wanting to give. There's a feeling of brotherhood, a feeling of interconnection. We talk about everybody being one, but we're all one family. And when we're in this consciousness, naturally, everybody becomes the brother, the friend. It's like day and night. <laughs> so this is where we've come to. And this is what we call Robin. Or in Christianity, they call it the devil. But all it is, is negativity. And it's within us. So the battle is when, uh, within us. It has nothing to do with anybody else. It's of our own darker side with the pure true side. And there's also uh, Maya, which is illusion. So we are in the illusion that we're the body. We're not really the body, but we're coming from that perspective which we call body consciousness. So with, whenever these qualities are there, because we're in that body consciousness, then there's going to be obstruction. And this actually is very simple, but it's all the problems of the whole world. <laughs> you can trace it back to all of these. 
which is very, I like simple. <laughs> and it's so simple here. All we have to do now, all we have to do, and it takes a little want to do that is to replace these things with these things. It's not about force. It's not about having to change. It's about bringing this awareness back inside. That's all. And then the dark automatically goes away. When you turn on the light, the dark goes away. So I keep reminding myself over and over and over again. This is the enemy and no one else. So we get so trapped into matter, we forget the beauty that we have. And we want to return to that. And that's all we're searching for. So we can have another meditation and then there'll be time for questions. So now is the time to fill the self again with that love and strength. But first I have to realize that I am the soul. So I visualize again. being at peace with a starlight. That is radiant. That is love. That I am a soul that is beyond this world its original truth and comes into the world to play a part. So I fly on the wings of my thoughts to the home of souls. that dimension beyond sound and beyond change. A world beyond time. Filled with silence. And I'm soaking in that silence. world of light. The home of all souls. Where the supreme soul resides. The supreme of all souls. a beautiful sparkling star of light. Who understands everything. Who knows the journey. Who knows the truth.
the one soul who is never influenced by the drama. That remains eternally pure, eternally beautiful. Who has no needs or desires. Exist only to give. Who's the remover of sorrow? the comforter of hearts. This one has no gender, but is the perfect mother, father, friend, All relationships anything the soul feels it needs it has a big treasure store in the heart of the supreme the unconditional love courage and strength. And like a flower, we open up and allow that pure love to heal, to flow in. soul is free. The love that heals everything. The one who is the comforter of hearts for all. And takes us back to what is true. We can live in the world in peace and joy together. So gently I bring my awareness back and if there's any question feel free to ask. Om Shanti, sister. My question is that today during all three sessions of meditation, um, I, my mind was just uh, wandering everywhere. The first time it was uh, like uh, I was trying to... Um, it was like when I was sitting down, I'm not comfortable. My foot is hurting. Now my knee is not comfortable. I was trying to adjust my body. The mm -hmm. second time, it was... Um, can you hear me? Yeah, oh. sorry. Okay. The second time, it was like... Um, 
it just came to my mind. I'm trying to focus and that, oh, I have to return this phone call and I have to do this today. So it was just ongoing. My mind was wandering. As you're talking, I'm trying to bring my awareness within, but my mind, too much traffic. Even the third session, the last session you did, my mind is wandering. I can't focus. Can you help? <laughs> <clears throat> well, wandering mind is a common practice. And it just takes, I mean, common, common situation, and it just takes a little bit of practice. But it's, it's having an interest to go within, for one thing, um, and patience to still the mind is to realize that those thoughts aren't helping me and to just keep coming back to what is true. Just bring the thoughts back. So if they were constantly running the whole time, if there's fear inside or there's um, some upset with something, then the thoughts run really fast and they're very hard to control. So first thing I have to do is just to think I am a peaceful soul and just keep, I visualize that and um, I try to keep bringing myself back to that. Maybe to accept what is the thoughts first accept that they're coming, not try to force them away, that helps. Um, and then just gently, it's, it's like the, there's a mind and then there, there's a parent and a child within. And the parent is observing and you observe the thoughts that are going. But you have to detach a little bit. The parent can see clearly and just Tell the child that those thoughts aren't benefiting, but with love, not a forced thing. Um, for me, that helps. Yeah, I think it's really practice. Practicing again and again and again, because I think in the beginning, so when I first came to this, I had been doing a different kind of meditation where I became extremely focused. <laughs> so it was a little easier maybe, but still my thoughts will wander sometimes, especially if something really challenging is going on. So, you know, but it's just lovingly bringing them back to what is true and thinking about it you know, thinking about, as we think of meditation as a forceful thing, we have to go in, we have to be peaceful, but it's really just talking to ourselves in a loving way and replacing the thoughts that are coming. So it's not trying to stop the thoughts, but it's replacing them and uh, talking to myself. So even you can do when you're walking around, you can um, just practice talking to yourself in this way that we that I shared um, and just see what gradually, gradually, because the thoughts running fast is really an extreme kind of a body consciousness. It's, we were all, in every, the whole world is, is like that. Um, but, and just get in touch with the self, start to talk to yourself, even if it isn't with these thoughts in a loving way, start to become a friend with yourself. Thank you. Hope I like the way you say to replace the thoughts. I think that's that's what I'm gonna try yeah. and bring bring the like you said. You know, don't uh, stop the thoughts, but replace the thoughts. Yes, and maybe that will change. So thank you very much. The other thing also is I mentioned the Raj Yoga course that we have. It starts on December 2nd. Um, if you 
want to study further, that's there. And the person who's teaching is very gentle, very easy to uh, learn from. And sure. You'll enjoy it a lot, I think. So okay. that's actually I have that information. It's the, I, I will. Uh, you had mentioned yesterday to go through the main site yeah. and then find out. Yeah, I will do that. It's on the Wednesday, Thursdays, and Fridays starting December. Sure. Okay. Okay, sure. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Om Shanti, sister. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Enjoy. Yeah, also, um, there's also a three-day experimental, experiential um, class Friday, December 8th, 18th, sorry. It's Friday, December 18th, 19th, and 20th. It's the same as this. And the person that be, will be sharing it is Annie, Annie Jorgensen. Okay. Sure. I'll look into it and um, definitely try it out. And hopefully it will bring me more peace and more awareness of, for the soul. Okay. Thank you very much. I hope so. Okay. Anybody else have a question? Hello, this is Carrie. Uh, when when we're trying to integrate um, the meditation into our daily lives, I was um, thinking what you said earlier about uh, perhaps twice a day, 10 minutes per time. Um, is it more important that it's 10 minutes or you know, is five minutes acceptable? And also I have a, a busy schedule and, and small children. So I'm wondering if the um, if it's important to pick a time when I'm positive that I'll be distraction free, which um, is, is very rare, or is it better just to kind of stick to a schedule and, and get done whatever you can, um, but stick to the same times each day? Whatever you can do is better than nothing, but uh, we have to make our own program really. I mean, ideally when I wake up, it's a good time. And, it, and what we do is we get up early because then there's no distractions. So if you get to bed a little earlier, you can get up early and it's a very beautiful time. The atmosphere is very peaceful, um, but you have to figure out for yourself. It's helpful to have a kind of a routine if, as much as possible, but you have to maybe be flexible too somewhat if you have children. But you know, the times, any times, even if you can just, do the traffic control, but try to have some powerful meditation or peaceful meditation that's a little longer at some point in the day, and sometime in the morning, sometime in the evening, if at all possible, because that will really help you. Um, and then just during the day, just little bits here and there, you know, but whatever you can do, and you can even be with your children and thinking these thoughts, you know, you don't have to be sitting always. It's just that you can go a little deeper when you're sitting and have a little bit more, it's a, maybe a little easier, but you can just carry these thoughts. You know, it's just really, we do open eye meditation here, but um, because it's about learning how to, it's changing my, shifting my awareness of who I am. So I'm just talking to myself and I can do that through the day. And when I'm talking to myself, I don't have to even close my eyes. It can be anywhere. I am a peaceful soul. I'm a gentle soul. I'm a child of the source, the supreme. I'm being of love and peace. So your children will be a, a wonderful teacher too because they're a lot more soul conscious, the little, little ones. I don't know how old they are, but little ones are very much. In <laughs> yeah. so they're they're more soul conscious until we get a little older and then the, all the things of the body and all that come so i hope that helps does that answer your question yes thank you okay you're welcome any other questions uh, i have a quick question on the open eye meditation would we follow the same four steps uh, when we try to do it, uh, do we follow just, can we follow the four steps that you provided on the first day of class? 
Yes, those four steps. Um, in the beginning, the four steps could be longer as you progress in the meditation, and then it's easier to just go in to it to withdraw, you know, fairly quickly. So, um, but those are generally the four steps. That's the progression, and and sometimes even if you progress further, you can just go into the embodiment. It depends. You know, sometimes some days are more challenging than others, but um, that is the way the progression works. Um, when you're in the world walking around, you don't want to sit there and think, oh, now it's time to withdraw. <laughs> now it's time to pick a theme. But um, you can just be thinking these thoughts and using this knowledge in your life, seeing others as souls is a very beautiful experience. And they take benefit from that as well. You know, it's it's really about how in the in the course that is taught that is a little longer will teach you more about how to be in the world and the tools, the things that we can use, you know, the powers and things like that. So anyway, did that answer? Uh, yes, I, I, I also found it uh, you you mentioned that you just thinking about it. It can be a type of open eye meditation. Uh, well, you, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. No, I was going to say that you you said that, and and I, I found it interesting because then you could actually be doing any kind of task that you want and do it automatically while you are actually in a spiritual uh, conscience. Uh, if you started before, I say like I'm a soul. I'm going to experience uh, love or peace uh, while I do this task and do it with the open eyes. Uh, I'm not too sure if I'm, 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 I'm saying that this is something that we can do or not. <laughs> it takes practice again, but that is the ultimate aim is to live it. <laughs> the ultimate aim. So when we're in silence, when we have peace and, and we're in a room where there's no distractions, it's much easier. And it's much easier to go in more subtly, more deeper, deeper. But um, and then the changes really start to. But it's only when we implement it in the physical, really, that it deeply shifts us. So, but it is about how to live in the world, and it is the aim, ultimate aim of this organization is that we can all live together in happiness and peace and love. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? You want to say hello and show you who you are, uh, the body, <laughs> the costume? You don't have to, but it's nice. Hello. <laughs> Thank you, Sister Carolyn. Yeah, I'm You're trying to practice in the morning and try how far I go. Uh, but like somebody else also said, uh, first day was much better for me. Second day and third day, too much of traffic. And like, I'm trying to bring it back. Um, maybe like you suggested, I'll try to change the thoughts and see how it helps. Yeah, you just observe what kinds of thoughts are coming in and what if there's like things that are pressing buttons or, you know, maybe if we talk about Supreme or something like that, or if it, you know, if there's anything that's keeping me from flowing with those thoughts and then address that, what is it that's getting in the way? What it's mainly what I need to do, like, oh, I have to cook. <laughs> it's like, what are the tasks I need to do, finish it before? So it's like planning the day. So maybe that I need to slow down a little bit. What is really helpful is if you have things you have to do, you write it down before you meditate. <laughs> you write a list and then you don't have to think about it. Yeah. So you just know it's there. So we set the thoughts aside for later. Yeah. You can talk to yourself in that way. Thank you. You're welcome. It's very helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Blank to um, sign up for the Raja Yoga meditation. Okay. Hi, Sheila. Thank you. Hi, Nina. Shanti. Okay, so I guess we'll close for 
the session and uh, good wishes, lots of love. And you can see all the programs we have and it's good to do the workshops and those kinds of things really helps also. Um, Tuesday, here's an announcement, Tuesday, November 24th at 7 p.m. There's a program, um, a Thanksgiving kind of a program called Enlightened by Gratitude. So that's, gratitude is such a beautiful thing because it opens our heart. And I think then it's much easier to relax. So that'll be wonderful. And the person who's sharing is wonderful. So. Um, and so I mentioned the other things, so you have the information. Okay. So good day. And lots of good wishes. Thank you. You're welcome. Take care. Hopefully see you again. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Wonderful experience. Thank you for the enlightenment I'm and so awareness. Thank so you. Fun. Om Shanti. Bye -bye. Om Shanti.